Hey guys, now we're going to look at how to do some problems involving calculating density. And I'm going to leave out kind of a key part of these problems, which is going through the wording of the problem and finding uh, the numbers that you actually need in order to uh, make the calculations on this. Um, so do be aware that there is more to it than this. Uh, but I'm going to show you basically, once you have that information, uh, what it is you need to do. So let's start with just the most basic example possible. What happens if we have an object with a mass of, we'll say, 500 grams and a volume of, let's say, 300 milliliters, we'll say it's a liquid. In order to do this, in fact, all problems where you're using a formula to calculate it, I don't even care what kind of stuff is going on anywhere else. I want you to always set it up like this. First, write down what you know. What is it they have told me that I know I can use for this problem? So in this case, I'm told that the mass is 500 grams. Notice what I'm including in here. I'm including that M to tell me it's a mass, and in addition to that, it's a little bit redundant, but I've also said grams, that unit, the unit grams, tells me that this is a mass. Grams can be a unit of anything else. So I have sort of redundancy here, but it's telling me twice that this value is a mass. Same thing for the volume, that capital V indicates volume, and then the units I'm always including the units on this, milliliters, that's a unit of volume, and so we have this. And now, the next part is, what do I want? Well, we're calculating density. Of course, what I'm going to ask you to do is find the density. So the thing we want is the density of the object, and I don't think I mentioned this in uh, the earlier readings on the assignment, but the symbol that we use for density is the Greek letter rho, which kind of looks like a funny looking P. So we're looking for density and I'm just going to use the symbol for that. Next up, we know there is an equation that allows us to calculate density. So we write that equation down. I'm not plugging in numbers, I'm not doing anything else, I'm just writing down that equation. Density equals mass over volume. Now that I've done that, I'm going to plug in numbers right below it. So in a separate step, I know that M is 500. I know that V is 300. And so density must equal 500 divided by 300. And now... I can put that in, and don't forget about units. Notice I've left off the units on this. Um, that's okay in the sense that it could kind of confuse you uh, as far as the math goes on this. Uh, don't let that happen as far as just letting the units confuse you, but we do have to put them back in. So now I take this 500 divided by 300. That's 1.6 repeating but don't forget about significant figures. This has one significant figure, this has one significant figure, so our answer can only have one significant figure, so our density would be two, now our units come into play, 500 grams divided by milliliters. So the density of this would be two grams per milliliter. Next, we're going to look at a problem where we're not necessarily trying to find the density, but we're trying to find the mass or the volume. Now, in this example, let's look at what we're given and what we're trying to find. Uh, in this case, we have the density. Remember, that's the symbol rho. It occurs to me that I should probably spell that out for you. That symbol is rho, and that's spelled R-H-O. And again, that's just a Greek letter. Uh, D is already used for distance and displacement in physics, so we use this instead. All right, so the density is 9.37 grams per cubic centimeter. 
Notice the units are important here. And the volume is 14 cubic centimeters, and we're trying to find the mass. So we always start out with what we're given. We're given that the density is 9.37 grams per cubic centimeter, and the volume is 14 cubic centimeters. And we want to find the mass. Now, in this example, it's pretty straightforward what equation we're going to use. Um, we've really only dealt with one so far. So it's a pretty safe bet that density, uh, the density equation, density equals mass over volume, is the equation you're going to use. Now, in the future, once you have a huge slate of equations under your belt, it won't be as clear which one you're supposed to use. And here's the way you decide. You look at all the things that you're given and all the things that you want, and you look for an equation that ties all of them together. So you go through the list of equations that you know, and in your mind you're looking for one that has density, volume, and mass. Well, the one that leaps to mind obviously here is going to be that density equals mass divided by volume. Now we substitute in what we know. We know that the density is 9.37. We don't know the mass. We know the volume is 14. And now we have to find the mass. And this is pretty easy done. This is just basic algebra. Over here we have the mass, which is what we want to know. But we have the mass divided by 14. We don't want that divided by 14 in there. So we have to undo dividing by 14, which is multiplying by 14. So we multiply both sides by 14. And what that does for us is that isolates the mass on one side, and then we have handy-dandy calculators, and we find that the mass is equal to, and here we have to be careful, don't let significant figures bite you in the hind end. Um, if you take 9.37 times 14, you get 131.18. However, this number has three significant figures. This number has two significant figures. Our answer can only have two significant figures. So this rounds off to be 130. And now units. What units of mass are involved here? It was gram in our density, so it must be grams here. So our mass would be 130 grams. All right. If we've already found the density, and we've already found in example one, we were finding the density of the substance. In example two, we found the mass. Bet you can't guess what we're looking for in example three. As you no doubt suspected, now we have the density, we have the mass, we're trying to find the volume. So we set this up by writing down the numbers that we're told. Density is 19.30 grams per cubic centimeter. Our mass is 16.3 grams, and we're wanting to find the volume. As we stated earlier, we look for an equation that incorporates all these variables, and we find that this one fits the bill. Plug-in numbers we know, 19.30 equals 16.3 over the volume. And here you have to be really, really careful because people have a tendency to see this math problem and to take 16.3 and multiply both sides by that. That is not how you would solve this. If you think back to example two, here we've got 16.3 divided by the volume. We're wanting to get that volume by itself, but it's not clear exactly how to do it from here. Let's move this V to the other side of the equation. Anytime you have it in the bottom of a fraction, you can multiply by what's on the bottom of that fraction, and it essentially moves it across the equation. Um, so we're going to multiply both sides by V, and we end up with 19.30 V equals 16.3. Now we're left with a very workable situation. We have 19.3 times the volume. We want the volume by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by 
16.3. And I put that in my calculator, so I have 16.3 divided by 19.3. And I get this number. And now again, we have to be careful with our significant figures. In this division problem, 16.3 has three significant figures, 19.30 has four. We have to round our answer off to have three significant figures, which means we're going to have 0 0.84, and then we round off this four, and it's going to round up to five. So our answer is that the volume would be 0 0.845. And then, again, the volume unit in the density is cubic centimeters. So our volume is 0 0.845 cubic centimeters. And that's pretty much all we can do with this density equation. There can be more things thrown in there, things that make you think about how to find the mass or how to find the volume uh, or find the density beforehand things like measurements off a graduated cylinder or the measurements from an electronic balance. Um, there are some tricks in there, but it all boils down to using this equation and manipulating the variables uh, as I've shown you here.